When recording audio for your video productions, both shotgun mics and lav mics have benefits and drawbacks. In this video, I'm talking with John McGregor from Sennheiser's Sound Academy to help you decide which one is right for you. Framing wise, you'd have to be pretty close to get these cropped out of the image. The closer you get, the tighter that frame would need to be yeah, without is. dipping into the yeah. frame. Whereas if there is a wide frame, having this at yeah. that distance, you may not even see it anyway. Yeah. And it's definitely going to give you much, much better audio because yeah. contrary to popular belief, though a shotgun can reject sound from the sides, it's not a telescope. No, it's not. But at the same time, is the shoot appropriate to have a lavalier on? For a newscast, it's it's very clear yeah. that there are cameras in the room. It's, yeah. it's, we're not trying to create a, a space that's, yeah. that's supposed to look natural. Whereas in a film, a fiction film especially, not a documentary, yeah. but a film where you're supposed to be in that world, it would be pretty off-putting and it would really break the fourth wall yeah. if you had a big mic <laughs> sitting right there. Now these are pretty big lavaliers. We also, you also get really, really small, tiny lavaliers that you can hide inside your hairline and things like that. Another time you'd want to use a shotgun is also because you want a more natural sound. I mean, if you're listening to this lav right now, this is going to be quite chesty, quite boomy. Most bass from most people comes from their chest. That's where the, the cavities are that can resonate that frequency. And that could be a good thing. That right. can be a very good thing, but it, it's not the most natural sound that we're used to listening to. I mean, we're sitting here in this room. This room's not too bad. It's a little bit reverberant in here, but it's more natural. This is very intimate and close. Yes, it will pick up a little bit of the room, obviously, because it's an omnidirectional microphone, but it's that's more natural than this is. But there are some seriously reverberant rooms. And in those cases, you are using a Omni lav here, yeah. but there's also the fact that it's much closer. closer. Yeah. So though it has an Omni polar pattern, it's much closer to you. So that ratio between the direct sound and the reverberant sound would be much wider. Yeah. The shotgun is much further away, but it has this interference tube that allows it to cancel sounds from the sides. Shotguns are really useful when the on-axis sound is quite different than the off-axis sound. Very much so. You can end up with reflections actually being directed back up the barrel of the shotgun. So obviously we know that the shotgun needs that interference tube to help cancel out side noises. In a reverberant space, you could get some of that reverb, that reflected sound, going back up the barrel, straight direct sound. And depending on how long or how short that, re that reflection is, you could end up with phasing going on. So you could get a real phasing issue going on where you can, you just, you know that there's there's something going wrong. Or you just really hear this reverberant echoey space, which is again, not something you want. Um, and it is, it's to do with the distance. In general, we would say shotguns are better for, yeah, more controlled spaces or even better outdoors where we're actually, what we're trying to do is, as you said, the direct sound is very different from that um, side sounds that are coming into the microphone. So, example, outdoor noises, cars driving past and so on and so forth, you're trying to do an interview, that's very different and you can use that difference in tonality to help the microphone do what it needs to do. Pay attention not only to where it's picking up, but where it is rejecting. If the noise is behind me, you may want to redirect the microphone so that that noise is then off axis to the mm -hmm. mic. There's a classic one of why you see boom pole operators pointing the back end of the microphone straight up into the sky. Because on shotgun microphones, there is a little bubble of sound at the rear where it will pick up a little bit of sound. But directly on those side points, on that nice, or the 90 and the, the 270, roughly, uh, it's cancelling out what's going on. Basically, you either have to have an operator, a sound guy with a boom pole operating it, which means it's another person on your crew. If you're outside in a crowded environment, you're going to have to have someone spotting, so i.e. helping direct the boom guy to make sure they don't run into things. That's another person on your crew. It becomes very restrictive for the people who are being recorded. This is an omnidirectional mic. Mm -hmm. That is technically then a super cardioid mic with a interference tube yeah. added to it. But by nature then, this mic is less susceptible to the proximity effect. Yeah, very. So even though it does get closer to the chest, it's extremely close to the source, mm -hmm. very small proximity. Um, it doesn't have as much of a no. buildup as if you were maybe using a cardioid. Yeah, if you're using lav. a cardioid, cardioid labs, I mean, we do have cardioid labs. They're not not necessarily as popular. I'm not sure if that's to do with just sound because of the proximity effect or if they're just not popular full stop. Um, but yeah, a cardioid being this close with, is within, what well, that's about, that's more than five centimeters, but you know, five centimeters are kind of our rule that you'll get a six dB boost in bass frequencies in proximity effects. 
Is that a good thing? Again, it depends on what people are wanting to get from the sound, but the Omni will give you that natural, unaffected sound. There's no uh, bass boost going on. And obviously other effects. I mean, Omnis as well, a great thing for kind of sort of being outdoors is Omnis don't really suffer from wind and noise so much and specifically don't suffer from popping noises. So if you get that pop, yeah. uh, they won't suffer from it. Even though they are kind of down here, as you said, if you're looking, if, I, if I'm looking down and I'm talking, I'm doing something with my computer and I could go puh and it will hit it. Whereas directional microphones really suffer from wind noise um, and uh, popping noises and so on. So, you know, a shotgun outside, it's one of the reasons why we have things like this to, to help with those uh, windy days. Yeah, and just for those who are unfamiliar, this is a tube that the microphone can go into mm. and it just basically diffuses the, the, the wind. Wind is a huge yeah. problem, especially for a very directional microphone. Very, yeah. There are also then solutions similarly for lives. One of the ideas would be you want to use a shotgun because you really want to get this away from the talent because as an example, you can hear this on the audio, talent can do this and that's going to make a nice crunchy noise. Whereas the shotgun, that shotgun audio is going to stay nice and clean because the talent's not touching it. As I'm moving my head up and down, if you hear that, there will be an audio change going on because even though it's an omnidirectional microphone, we're now getting closer, further away. It's the classic one of when you see reporters having a lolly on their jacket collar and they're talking to someone here, which is absolutely fine. But when they turn that way to talk to another person, it's gone, which is why normally on news reports, you like to see people with two lavaliers for that talking over at different people. So you always have one on the direction that the person's speaking. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. At this tiny range, the difference a small movement can make is quite large in proportion to the total distance. Yeah. Whereas here, even if I move this far, it's still relatively small in comparison to the total yeah. distance the sound yeah. has to travel, yeah. right? If you're out in a crowded environment doing an interview, for example, slap two lavaliers on and move around. Yeah, okay, people might walk in front of the camera shot, but that's kind of the natural feeling. You're out in uh, a wide open space, there's lots of people, it's, it's a busy environment. It doesn't matter if people walk in front of the shot because it's kind of what you're doing. And it removes that restriction of being stuck to having some poor, person yeah. standing there with a boom pole above their head the whole afternoon. Yeah, holding that above their head and being cognizant of shadows that they're casting yeah. onto the, the frame yeah. or, I or mean, even, dropping, seen, even yeah. dropping into the frame. Yeah, and I've seen that in professional films because at a certain point if that happened on the good take, it's like, well, that's the best take. It's the only good take in some cases, so that's what they used. Well, I think the best one was it recently was the season one of The Mandalorian. Yeah. Uh, there was a scene in there, I can't remember which episode it was. It's in the middle of one of the scenes, and you just see this shotgun going whoop, whoop, out of the scene. Yeah. I guess they use shotguns even in a galaxy far, far away. They'd probably a Sennheiser one too. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time, that audio will be replaced after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just trying to get sort of like a field recording of the film for reference later on yeah. so that we can match it up. Yeah. The best method for a, a absolutely critical film shoot would be if resources were unlimited, mm -hmm. To use everything yeah. at your disposal. Yeah, have so, everything you can get your hands on. Yeah. Anything is going to be better than obviously using the camera, audio. Yeah. So just as an example, this room isn't that bad, no. but here right now you're hearing the camera audio and it, it's quite terrible. The live audio sounds a lot cleaner, mm -hmm. but again, it's subject to those different side effects that we've yep. discussed in this video. And right now you're hearing the shotgun mic, which does have its own effects as mm -hmm. well. Now you know how to make the better decision. That's right for you.